Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sharon Whiteman, and I'm part of the executive team at the Lyme Disease Association of Australia. And I'm really delighted to be having a chat with Amina tonight in regards to tick bite first aid. Now, I know many of you know Amina. She's you know, a, a veteran in Australia in treating tick-borne diseases. But I'll just give you a little bit about her background. Amina Easton Hillier is a professional qualified award-winning, uh, won the award of Australian Practitioner of the Year and has worked in the health industry for over years. She specializes in chronic infections, complex cases that often have yet diagnosed, often anxiety, depression, and skin disorders. Her unique diagnostic skills in functional medicine testing are comprehensive and have successfully helped thousands of chronically ill patients. Amina has completed five years of studies in nutrigenomics and often looks at a patient, patient's genetic profile to further gain insight for an effective treatment outcome. Specializing in stealth infections with a keen interest in viral illnesses, including post-viral and bacterial infections, for example, Epstein-Barr, Lyme borreliosis, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, that parasites, mold illnesses, mold illnesses all of which are foundation to play a role in chronic symptoms. Amina is passionate about ensuring that Australians sick with tick-borne infections get optimal and timely education and treatment. And the situation, you know, right now in Australia is pretty dire. So, you know, we've had a chat and we realized that, you know, failing the opportunity to get um, immediate treatment after tick bite, tick bite first aid might be uh, an important solution for some patients. So Amina, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. You're welcome. So let's go and just give people a little bit of background. How did what? How did you get started? And what? Tell us about your passion for naturopathy. I've always, always wanted to um, help people. I was originally going to do medicine, and I just when I travelled to Australia, I found this naturopathy course existed, which was just more in alignment with where I wanted to go. And yeah, that that started twenty five. That, yeah, 25 years ago now. So, um, and I've always had a very um, strong interest in biology and biochemistry and how the body works. And yeah, just just sort of really wanting to get into the nitty gritty of the more of the complex type cases. Um, I started working in a medical center with practitioners that we were all specializing in chronic fatigue, complex kind of chronic symptoms, uh, a lot of patients with pain, nervous system disorders, depression, anxiety, gut problems that were often sort of never really diagnosed with anything particular. And that's where I started looking at a lot of the stealth infections and what are the underlying things that are causing this fatigue, the pain and the continual chronic systemic inflammation symptoms that I see a lot of my patients have. And then enters tick-borne diseases and that whole complex of symptoms and experiences. What started you interested in that area? Well, that that sort of evolved from working with patients with chronic fatigue. So the medical center I was working at, um, we had a lot of patients with fatigue. There were a couple of patients that had Lyme disease from South Africa. And just looking at those symptoms, and then I guess word just got round. It just sort of cascaded into this influx of people hearing about the work we were doing and realizing, you know, hey, there's a lot of vector-borne illnesses out there, and and these haven't been looked at in a lot of detail. When I asked around a lot of colleagues and different um, education organizations, no one had really heard of it and weren't really looking at tick-borne infections particularly. And because I've lived out. You know, I mean, out in the hinterland, I do have a lot of ticks around me myself. So I was just curious of how are these affecting people? Um, and yeah, it just sort of evolved and just, I don't know, it was my path, which I love, <laughs> which has kind of evolved all of the things that I love um, researching and looking at and wanting to understand more. Well, we're, we're very grateful for that, Amina. You know, you you always let me reach out to you um, when I've got people in trouble and and I'm very grateful. So Interestingly, this year, we get so many reports, like I live, we both live on the Sunshine Coast, but from the whole East Coast of Australia, I'm getting reports from everywhere that it's one of the worst tick bite seasons they've ever experienced. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it a lot mm. with patients and also a lot of patients that I may not have seen for five or 10 years 
coming back, they've been bitten by ticks and, and it's just, yeah, it's, it, it just seems to have really um, escalated in, into a problem now. Mm. I recently um, was somebody, I, we have a Lyme disease branded car and this man came up to me in, in the shopping, in the parking lot outside the shopping center and he was really distressed. I could tell he was upset and he told me that he, they're just getting tick bite after tick bite. What should we do? Mm. And and he led um, some bush regenerators. So he had a team and he was most concerned about his duty of care to the people mm. that he worked with. And then with a couple of days later, a friend, a local friend got bitten, phoned me and said, what should I do? And mm. so I, I'd started thinking, you know, really, I feel helpless because, you know, many doctors in Australia are told not to prescribe antibiotics. So we're in sort of a bit of a serious bind, really. And if people don't know what they're doing and can't fight for their life, they may not get immediate treatment. So, you know, I just reached out to you and we came up with this idea. So what should someone do if they do have a tick bite? Well, look, if the if the tick is fully embedded, it is better to get it taken out um, professionally. Um, maybe see a medical doctor or go to the hospital to get it taken out just to ensure that it is taken out properly. If it's just... Um, if it's just sort of on the body or, or it can be lifted off easily, that's okay. Uh, and just to be really mindful, like we don't know how long it takes for infections to get into the system, how long the tick needs to be on the person. But even just for a, a, a few minutes, um, people will have reactions. They'll have inflammatory reactions. And it's it's hard to say. No one really knows the you know the length of time of, of the actual chance of infection there. So it's best to have the tick removed ASAP and then to be really mindful of the actual bite site. So if there is anything that can be, I use herbal medicine antibacterial sprays on top of the, the tick bite. And then the, the whole of the first aid starts. It, it really is a case of monitoring the person, monitoring themselves to see how they're feeling. Um, there's going to be some kind of inflammation for sure. Often it's itchy and, and irritated and there, there may be a rash, but we know there's not an exact percentage, but 25 to 30 percent of people do not get the rash that's often associated with some of these tick-borne infections. So despite getting a rash or not, we just need to really sort of work on that person and, and do anything we can. It depends on where the tick bite is, because sometimes the tick bite could be on the head or somewhere where the person can't see it and you can't see if there's a rash, you can't see the inflammation. Often there is pain and at the site of the bite, sometimes people don't even feel the bite. If it's a tiny, tiny nymph nip tick, um, they might not even know. And it might be, you know, days later, they just notice a little tag hanging off themselves. Sometimes people find a tick in the bed that may have been engorged and then they realized, oh, that was on me. So mm -hmm. especially if people have animals, dogs and cats coming into the house, that's um, one sure way um, of, of getting ticks in the house. And you don't even have to be outside being exposed to where they are. That's how I got my first tick bite that I got sick with in 2002. It came in on one of our dogs. And I lived yeah. very close to you that time, actually. Um, and so we really want, what's your experience or recommendations around um, attempting to get antibiotics? Attempting to what, sorry? Get antibiotics. Look, I always recommend patients, if they have been bitten by a tick, to firstly monitor their symptoms. If If they end up, with any kind of severe inflammation or it's really painful, um, if it looks like there's an infection at the site, if the patient is having any fevers or any you know severe headaches, or sometimes um, say if the tick bites anywhere around the face, the lymph glands will swell up. So that's something to be mindful of. And it, it can be just a case of the body is trying to get rid of the infection and it could be a whole plethora of infections. But it's, um, yeah, just really a case of, of monitoring it and making sure that we really look at the symptoms. So the, the pain, the inflammation, any rashes, any fevers. The thing is with some tick bites is that sometimes you can get a, a reaction straight away. I had a tick bite not too long ago. Um, it only actually bit, I've got little earrings on my where I've had piercings done and I actually thought it felt like someone was trying to pierce the top of my ear and it was actually a tick trying to get its um, its little um, probus into my ear and 
I got it off immediately, but in, straight away I had almost like an anaphylactic reaction where by the time I got the tick and I put it in my tick box in the freezer because I'm collecting them all um, for research data one day, I found by the time I got back into bed, my um, I washed my hands and everything and my whole of my neck had swollen and I ended up having like this full on hives reaction. And that's something I've never had before. So um, the next day I, I looked like elephant woman and I was like, okay, I've really had a full on, it was, it was a paralysis type tick. I've had a reaction there. Now, I don't know whether in that time that tick would have been able to give me some sort of infection, but I got straight onto my herbs, straight onto everything I needed to do. I did actually take antibiotics, which I rarely, rarely ever do, but I just thought, yeah, I'm not risking this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to get onto it straight away. So if if there are these types of inflammation symptoms, I, I would recommend if it's possible to get antibiotics from a medical practitioner would be great. But it is challenging because these days a lot of doctors are really busy. It's hard to get in to see someone immediately. Um, a lot of doctors might not have the knowledge or um, the resources and, and are quite apprehensive, as you mentioned, in prescribing the right type of antibiotics. And so then patients are left with the dilemma of what, what next, what can we do? Mm. Yeah, they're actually told not to in health policy to not treat tick bites unless um, without referring to an infectious disease specialist, which would delay treatment or yep. if somebody had traveled overseas. So, yep. um, and this is gonna be a personal choice, but I, having had the personal experience of Lyme disease and how severe and extreme it is, I probably choose to prophylactically treat whether I had symptoms or not, to be honest. Yep. And I look back, um, on, I had my son had a tick bite and I, in retrospect I did get him an antibiotic um, coverage for four weeks but I'm looking at him now and I thought I wish I would have thrown everything I had at it I wish I would have done mm -hmm. a herbal complimentary herbal 100 I, yeah. I highly recommend and that is um, exactly what I do so as well as whether be it someone is able to have antibiotics or not definitely the immune system because whatever happens whatever infections the person may be exposed to, there is gonna be an inflammation um, response and an immune response of some kind. Sometimes tick bites seem to sort of settle within a few days. Sometimes they can take weeks. Sometimes I've heard patients say that when they've been bitten by a tick, other tick bites that they've had in the past flare up and become itchy, which is interesting. So it all comes down to inflammation. So from a naturopath perspective, I do whatever I can to support the immune system, reduce the inflammation, and I like to definitely give antibacterial herbs to the patient to make sure, just as a coverage, just to make sure. And, and you know, they can be general antibacterial herbs that I use, um, but I, I, I do like to be more specific and, you know, check with the patient what um, medications they're on. And, you know, there's a few contraindications that might need to be talked about. Awesome. So immune support, antimicrobial, and anti-inflammatories in, in mm -hmm. protocol as a preventative and a conjunction to any medical treatment that you may have. Um, so I think I think that's about it I wanted to cover today, Amina. Um, I think even if you don't have rash or symptoms, like I said, my personal choice would be still to treat now. I think that's where I'm at, especially seeing the tick season this year, and it doesn't seem to be going backwards. So, no. you know, if you're watching this, that means that we've launched um, a little program where you can reach out and get a quick tick bite um, first aid type of appointment and organize some herbs. So those questions that Amina uh, wanted to ask you, you know, just to make sure that you don't have something else going on that uh, uh, might contraindicate some of the, the blends that she might choose. I mean, what would you like to leave people with today if they've experienced or, or even are working? Like this is outdoor workers, outdoor Aussies, you know, Aussies are such outdoor people that we're all at risk, really. I think it's just handy to have um, a bit of a toolbox, you know, don't go out without tweezers. Um, antiseptic wipes, for example, maybe a little herbal spray that is an antimicrobial that if you get a tick, you can actually spray it on to help get the tick off and protect the area. And just to get straight into, you know, the, the immune support that I'll be recommending, vitamin C and, and the certain herbs that I use, 
because there's no there's no point in risking anything. We don't know whether it's just a, an acute inflammatory response to the tick bite, mm. which it just could be. I know we know <laughs> there are so many types of tick-borne infections these days, viruses, so many things. The ticks are dirty, grubby, grotty animals that do um, have, a, they harbour a whole lot of um, microbes. So it's just great to support the immune system. And I do find if someone is already tired, busy, run down, maybe they've got lots of things going on, sometimes that's when the tick bite infection or the inflammation can actually affect them more than it normally would because their body's already fatigued in a state of inflammation and their immune system might be in that sort of hypersensitive zone, adrenally fatigued, those kind of things. So they're all things that will determine how well the person will um, recover from the tick bite. And so it's it's a case of just working with what we, what we have and, and finding out, okay, what does this person need? What is the best way to put their immune system um, in the best state possible? Yeah. And we'll leave you with this. Testing is problematic everywhere. They do not test for all the potential pathogens that they're, okay. they know to exist in Australia. So you can't depend on testing. So it's best, we recommend you take pro you're proactive and you take action. Yeah. So check out our website. There's full instructions on tick bite first aid and send in your questions because we'll add it to the FAQs and you can always reach out to Amina and get some advice. So thanks for watching and good luck with your outdoor pursuits. Mm-hmm. <laughs>